Hi, I'm Marilyn San Clemente, and welcome to my creative playground. Uh, tonight, I'm going to show you some really cool fall ideas that I've seen, and uh, hopefully you can learn something a little bit new, and we'll have fun. card that we're going to make tonight, and I'm also going to share with you some of the fall paper, which I really, really love. But what I wanted to show you was how to do this technique where you get multiple colors on um, a single stamped image, something like this so that you can combine fall colors and make it look like fall trees. And then this is a card that I also made this afternoon and I used the Forever Ferns stamp set, which I love. It's one of my favorite stamp sets from the new, I think it is my favorite stamp set from the new catalog. And all I did was stamp the leaves and things in fall colors and then I added some fall paper, um, some of the plaid tidings paper to um, the back side of it. To show you this I thought this is a really pretty card with the um, the pretty milk can that's been around for a couple of years I think that's called country home this is a card that we talked about a couple of weeks ago and that's made with the fall set but it has this really cool fence um, it has this wheelbarrow and also the flowers that fit inside the wheelbarrow and it just has some really cool patterns with it as well and what would fall be without Halloween so I love this Halloween card and this is the magic in the night paper and this is another great example of the magic in the night paper and then this is a really cute Halloween card that my friend Rose made with the um, owl set, which I think is howling in the night, something like that. And she always decorates her cards on the inside too. So I love this, that's really pretty. And here's another one with the fall set and I use the plaid tidings paper. And then this one uses the gilded autumn paper, which is beautiful. And then this is one of the um, images from this set and so let me show you some of the papers for the fall and like I said this is the Gilded Autumn package I love this paper and it's got this really pretty pattern with the rust and also some of the pool party and then it's got gold and copper images in it and so those are acorns that are embossed in gold and copper. I love these pumpkins that are embossed with gold. Here's another pretty leaf that's embossed with gold and copper. Here's a background that's embossed with gold. And then another leaf that's on the mint macaron paper and embossed with gold. And then if you flip these over, there's some pretty designs as well, so let me do that. There's our larger ones. And here's the here's a herringbone design, um, another leaf design, a really pretty stripe design, and a speckled um, crumb cake design. And then we've got this, so if we flip that over, um, there's a chevron pattern. And this one has a really pretty green stripe with a gold gold embossed on it. So that is the Gilded Autumn paper, which we're going to use first. And then what goes with that is in the new holiday catalog, there's also some foils, gold. Um, it's kind of two shades of gold. This is a lighter gold and a gold, and then the copper. And this is it doesn't have the shine that the other foils have. It's more of a flat image and it, you can see it's got almost a distressed pattern to it, which gives it a really cool image. All right, and let's get started with this one. This card uses the Winterwood set, which has been around for a couple of years. It is my favorite tree set since Lovely as a Tree went away. This is now my favorite tree set. And what I love is it has this birch background that you can use and I've used that on a lot of cards over the years. Tonight, I'm going to show you how to color these so that it gives it a fall type of look. Here's a really pretty tree, uh, evergreen tree. And what's neat about these is it has these dyes. And so the evergreen tree, you can actually make 3D. 
um, because you stamp you stamp the evergreen tree twice and then you cut out one with the background and you cut out one with this which cuts out these little pieces and you just kind of curl these up and then it makes that tree 3d which is really cool so that's my favorite kind of Christmas tree at this point and then there's also this tree this outline tree that's part of it as well so that's the Winterwood set and it's still my favorite tree set let's work on this card and I'll show you how to do the background there um, okay so here's the pieces so here's one that I did that I didn't really like too much because the colors didn't blend enough you'll see how I do this in a minute but um, okay so I have my cutting tool and I have cut a piece of cardstock to five and a half by eight and a half I'm going to score this at four and a quarter to make my card base this is this particular card is I took the um, this sheet or that um, actually let me pull it out I can show you it's easier to show you okay so the back side is the herringbone or the chevron look and the front side is the embossed horns and leaves and so what I did was I cut a piece of this paper to um, three and three quarters by five inches and and then I cut it not quite in half and flipped one piece over so that I had both sides showing so okay so for this card I'm doing the same thing but I'm using this design this leaf design so the bottom of that leaf design the back side of it is this and this is the top side of it so I am going to I have my four and a quarter by five and a half inch crumb cake card base let me put that back up I have this is an early espresso piece that I cut to um, five and one eighths by three and seven eighths so that I can layer this and then I'm going to layer this piece and layer this piece on top so I do need to trim this a little bit so that it's the right width and so that will be three and three quarters Okay, so now, here's my tape. Attach that. And I'm going to attach this. So what I had to do with the stripes, I really, really like the stripes running up and down on this. But to get the stripes running up and down and the leaves going up and down, I had to cut two different pieces um, two different ways. So that's something to be aware of when you're mixing patterns within a designer paper set, is just to watch, watch, watch the direction that your things are going in. Okay, and I am going to attach a piece Oops, I am going to take a piece of this copper paper and I'm going to cut just a little strip. Usually what I like to do is I like to take a piece of ribbon. When I do something like this where I split paper, um, I like to take a piece of ribbon or a little piece of foil and just cover up that seam. So I'll do that. I have to say that since since COVID has hit and I have not been able to have in-person classes, um, my cats have not been happy. And uh, so they miss all of you coming and stopping by. Okay, so there's our layer. So I'm gonna put that on the card. So there's our card base. Okay, and I just wanted to show you this. This is what not to do. So what I wanted to do with the trees is that I wanted to get that look where different colors are coming through. 
And um, one of the ways to do that is to use a sponge dauber. They look like this when they're clean. And a little while ago, I pulled out my sponge daubers and I knew I had pulled out a couple of them and left them up here on my plate, which is you know where I work off of. And all of a sudden, a whole bunch of them are missing. And then I looked down on the floor and guess who had been playing with them because they roll. <laughs> So my cat was having a good time this afternoon when I pulled the sponge daubers out. What I recommend to do something like this is to select um, three or four colors that go together. So I chose the Crushed Curry, and you do have to play with it a bit, um, Cajun Craze, and the Cherry Cobbler. And I did try some other color combinations, which I didn't like at all. So I used the Mango, which is a little bit darker than the Crushed Curry, and it's kind of a combination of Crushed Curry and Pumpkin. And then I did the Cajun Craze, and it just was, it was too close, and it, it just kind of all blended together, and it did not look good. So, as I have cut a piece of Very Vanilla, oops, and it's a little bit longer than what I need, but we'll start with that. The way to do this is you always start with your lightest color because you don't want to mix your dark colors into your light color. And what you do is you completely ink up stamped image with the lighter color. And then I'm going to take the, and I have a couple of extra sheets here, so if it doesn't come out the way I liked the first time, I can redo it because it may not come out the way I like the first time. So then I have a Cajun Craze, which I'm going to put over here, and I have my Cherry Cobbler. And what you want to do, I'm just dipping this into the ink pad. Hopefully you can see that. Let me see if I can get this, make sure that you can see this. So what I have done is I've inked this up with the um, Crushed Curry. And I have dipped this into the Cajun Craze, and I'm going to just rub this off a little bit. When I go down, I don't want it to be an exact circle, which is what happened to the other one. And that's why I really didn't like the way it came out. So now what I'm going to do is I'm just going to go around and add just a little bit of Cajun Craze to everything. And then I'm going to wipe this off, and you'll see that I got some yellow on it. And then I'm going to take this one, and I'm going to do the same thing with the cherry cobbler. Okay. And like I said, you don't always like it the first time. And then what I'm going to do is I have my early espresso marker and I'm going to color the tree stems going down in the brown because tree stems don't change color. Or not, I shouldn't say stems. The um, tr tree trunks don't change color which the stem feeds off of those. But okay. what you want to do is you want to huff because this is water-based ink, so it does start to dry. So the yellow will definitely be dry now. So you just use all your hot air and huff on it. And then I'm just going to stamp. Oh, eh, that's okay. It's not great. Okay, so what... So this is my finished one that I like, okay, which has nice even coordination between the colors. This one I I didn't rub enough, and so I got the edges of the dauber in there, so it just looks round. And this one, I like these two. This one, these are okay, but this is kind of, I, I don't have enough color down here. So let's start over. Paper has two sides. So this is a technique that you have to play with, and you need to do it a few times to get it to work. And it's just one of those things. But that's art. Not all, not all art comes out perfectly the first time. Okay, so I've inked this up with yellow. I have my Cajun Craze over here. I'm gonna get my card. I don't wanna smear my card, there we go. I have my Cajun Craze. So now what I'm going to do is, okay, there we go. I put quite a bit of Cajun Craze on there. And now I've got my Cherry Cobbler. Okay. 
And I think this one's going to come out significantly darker because I did cover up a lot of yellow on this one. Oh, and I did not do the tree trunks. Okay. So the other thing is after you do this where you're running your um, espresso marker on the yellow, you do want to um, wash it off because it will make the espresso a little bit lighter. And you don't want that to stay on your marker. Okay. Oh, I like that. That came up. I like that much better. I think that's the combination of the yellow and the espresso. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to take my pen again and I'm just going to finish up here and follow that up into the tree. But what I like about this is it's, it's a little bit smoother. You can see the yellow, but you can also see the other highlights, but they're not, they don't look like they were painted on. Um, they're not perfectly round like they were painted on with a dauber. So, and all you have to do after you do something like this is um, wash your daubers in the sink, just run them under water and they will come clean. They will be a little bit stained, but not too bad. Oops, and I Okay, so I'm going to trim this just a little bit, and there we go, and then we'll add that to this piece. And the reason why I'm trimming this is just a little bit is because um, I do want to show the pattern of the paper and I didn't want this piece to be too large but I did want to get the trees completely on it so I'm going to trim that I will mount this and then trim this piece Go. Okay, and now we're going to take some of this pretty copper ribbon that's in the holiday catalog or the fall catalog, and I'm going to cut a little piece here, and then I'm going to tie a little bow. So what I do is I tie a bow in the end of the ribbon, and I do the bunny tail or the bunny ears thing where you take the bunny ears and you feed one inside the other. Oops, let's see if I can get this and then pull it and then fix the... That seems to work the best for me for um, little tiny pieces. So, and this copper, this copper ribbon is thick. It's very pretty though. Okay, so now what I'm going to do is to attach this piece across the bottom. Oh, I didn't stamp my message. I'm going to, um, let me do that first. Okay, so here we go. Okay. And what I did was I used early espresso, which is the paper that's on the back of this. And now I'm just going to put my ribbon on. So I want that to come across here. So I'm going to flip this over. I'm going to put just a little bit of glue here and here. Maybe put that too high. There we go. And then I'm just going to feed my ribbon across. Okay. And then I'm going to put my bow on. Actually, what I'm going to do is just put this on the card. Oops, and that piece came off. Already it came off. So we'll put this on the card. Oops, that still came off. Okay, so let's feed this back under. There we go. 
And then what I like to do with these little bows is I use a glue dot. I'm going to just put this along here. There we go. Okay, and that's that card finished. These gold would be pretty. The red's a little bit off because that's a real red, and this is a deeper red. These kind of clear gold would be pretty. So we could put some of these down here. Oops. There we go. Okay. Here we go. So I'm just added these to add a little bit to the box. If you're not on my mailing list, go out to stampwithmarilyn.com and sign up for my mailing list and you will get my newsletters. And so thanks again for stopping by and take care.